I mentioned what variables are in the last few movies, but let me recap on that once more. And I'm going to once again create a new macro by right clicking and selecting new macro. And the hotkey that I'm going to assign is Control Alt A and click scripting editor. A string variable stores text or numbers. A number variable stores just numbers and a decimal stores a number with a decimal. Okay, let's go ahead and try using some variables. If we go into Macro Express, we can either create a new macro or use an existing macro. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one by right clicking in this blank area here and selecting new macro. I'm going to choose an activation key. Uh, let's just say Control Alt A and you can choose anything that you want just make sure that you remember what you set that at go ahead and go into scripting editor let's go ahead and give you an example of not using a variable let's go under dialogs and text box display we go under box content and type in the quick red box jumped over the lazy dog press ok and run this macro. Okay, so we didn't do anything special here. We just created a text box display. Well, let's go ahead and use a variable now. Uh, first, we need to scroll down to variables in the application. And we want to use a string. So from here, you have quite a few different options. You can set decimals or set the variable from file, uh, set integers set it for miscellaneous uh, set string is what we want to use so go ahead and double click on that now as I was saying a variable is an invisible storage container macro express allows you to have 99 string variables uh, number variables and decimal variables so what we need to do is select a variable that we haven't used on this script yet we haven't used any variables yet as far as this macro script's concerned, so we'll just leave this set to T1, and we're going to type in the first couple words that appear in the uh, sentence we already created. So let's do the quick red and press OK. Now in this example, we're going to go ahead and use multiple variable set strings, so let's double click on it again. And this time let's select T2 because T1 is in use already by the quick red. So on T2, we're going to type in jumps over the and press OK. And finally, we will add one more for the rest of the sentence. So go to variable set string once more. And this time we need to use uh, T3 or any number that we haven't used yet since T1 is in use by the quick red and T2 is in use by jumps over the. So select T3 from our list and select the initial value box. And here we're going to type in lazy dog and click OK. So now that we've declared the variables T1, T2, and T3, we now need to move these up so they appear before text box display. And the reason why is because we need to tell these variables to declare, and then what we're going to do is have the output of those variables. In a real-world example of what I just said, if you had three marbles, they would actually need to exist before you could start using them. The same thing with macro express and variables. Okay, so now that we've created percent %t1, percent %t2, percent %t3, we now need to go into our text box display and modify what string we already put in there. If we go under box content, I'm just moving this down so that we can see what our percent %t1, percent %t2, and percent %t3 is. We can modify this to be whatever we want. And we're going to use variables in this case to display our string of text. To mix these up a little bit, we're going to put T1, T3, and then T2. Actually typing the text or numbers in a variable is relatively easy, 
what we need to do is simply type in the percent %t1 and then followed by a percent. So it just is the same thing as how it appears in the variable set string percent %t1 percent. Then I put a space in and put percent %t3 percent and then another space percent %t2 percent. So just to recap on that, I have T1, which is going to display the quick red, T3, which is going to say lazy dog, and then T2, which is going to say jumps over the. And let's go ahead and move this back up and press OK. Now if we try to run this, you'll notice that we get the quick red lazy dog jumps over the. There's many different places you can use variables. Uh, text box display is just one location, but there's many others, such as text type. In fact, most of the application you can actually use variables in uh, to declare information. Let's go ahead and discuss the other variable types. Variable set decimal, which I'm going to insert before my text box display. So what I'm going to do is select variable set decimal and select this box that says insert after. In the set decimal variables, I don't have quite as many options as the set string, so I'll go ahead and discuss those. The set value now allows us to set the actual value before running the script. A prompt for value will ask the end user uh, what they want this decimal to be. And then, of course, you can type in what text you want to display to the user, such as please enter a decimal of your choice. Finally, set from clipboard will allow you to set that the decimal variable from the clipboard. And this might be beneficial if you're using a website that has numbers that modify constantly and you need to select that number. For the prompt for value, you also have a couple of other options. You have mask input, which allows you to mask what the user is typing in. Prompt will always be on top which means that this dialog box, enter value, will always be on top of the screen. And store zero if canceled, which means that if the user clicks cancel, the decimal will be zero instead of ending the macro. In this example, let's go ahead and use set value now. And if you remember, we already specified several variables in this macro, but those were variable strings which use T1, T2, and T3 up to T99, whereas decimals use a D. So we can actually use D1 up through D99 for decimals. And from here we can declare our initial value, say 5.45, and click OK. Now with decimals you actually can just use whole numbers. However, decimals also allow you to use a fraction of a whole number such as 0.45. Okay, so now that we've declared our variable d1, we now need to type this variable in somewhere so that we can actually see it uh, work. So in our box content, let's put a space and percent d1 percent and click OK. Now if we run this again by clicking play, you'll notice that we get our uh, different strings and then we get our decimal string 5.45. Go ahead and press OK. Let's go ahead and change this variable set decimal to prompt us for the number. So in our prompt text I'm going to put, put please enter a decimal and click OK. Once we press play again we can type in a decimal for a whole number. So if we simply type 5 in here and click OK, you'll notice that we get all our variable strings and then we get our variable decimal. And let's go ahead and press OK again. Okay, the last variable group is variable set integer. And we want to add this once again after the variable set de decimal. So we're going to click the insert after button. Now we have the regular options set value now and prompt for value, but we also have quite a few other ones and I'm going to discuss those more in a later video. Let's go ahead and use the option set value now. If we choose a variable name, 
we've already used t1, t2, t3, d1. Well, integer variables actually have their own set of numbers as well. n1 all the way down to n99. And we can type in the initial value of this variable, say 15, and click OK. Now that we've declared the variable, we need to show that variable on the screen. So if we go back into our text box display, we can put a space and percent n1 percent and press OK. We run this movie once more. Now it's going to ask us for the decimal still, which we'll type in 5. And we first see all these strings, and then we see the decimal, and then we see the actual integer, which is 15, set right here. And we press OK. And this concludes this training video. Thanks for watching.